glad this isn't a big crowd, is what I'm saying. So, um, I grew up in a, um, a very traditional church home. I loved my church home. I, I had great parents. They brought me to Sunday school every Sunday, and then on Wednesdays I went to confirmation. So I just had a very traditional upbringing. You know, nothing, um, no bad things were happening in our home. I didn't get involved in really bad things. Um, back in the early 70s, there was a really scary movie that came out called Thief of the Night. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you tell us? I know, I know. And, and it really was a huge impact on my life. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was going to have it. And the church that I went to, you know, if you're baptized as a baby and then confirmed later that you were, you were good, you're good to go. And to me that just seemed, um, there was a lot of open holes there. It just, so just as a, you know, a 12, 13, 14 year old girl thinking, okay, so I do all of this and let's say I rob a bank, am I, am I okay? So let's say we take it one step further. You know, let's say, God forbid, I kill somebody. You know, at what point? At what point do I lose my salvation? So it just seemed very unclear if I was a Christian or not. I wanted to be. You know, I would try and read the Bible, and it just did not make any sense. It was reading Hebrew or Greek. Um, so. When I was 15 to 16 years old, so going into 10th grade, um, there was a young lady who just shined. Her countenance was different. She was involved in a lot of sports that I was involved in, but she was very different from the other girls that I could see. And she was talking to me about Jesus. And she was talking about how she talks to Jesus every day. And um, he, she, he's with me all the time. And I'm just thinking, wow. I mean, it was, it was so personal that it was almost a little strange to me. But I could see, that, and you can't fake this, that there was a glow on her countenance that I really, really desperately, desperately wanted. So um, there, so I knew I was, I was hungry. I didn't know I was hungry, but I knew I wanted something. So I worked at a very small little restaurant in Fergus Falls, and we had, um, I'm not sure if it was Crazy Days, but they had a poster up in the lobby advertising an ecumenical church service in a particular park in the summertime. And um, I knew from confirmation that ecumenical meant non-denominational, or so I thought. So I thought, well, maybe this is the church that my friend was talking about. And if it's outside, you know, low pressure, I can go there, and nobody's gonna know, I could just kind of slip in the back. And this was in the summertime, so I rode my bike to the park, and there was nobody there. And I was very, very disappointed at that. Um, but there were a lot of cars, so the park was right by the high school, and there was a lot of cars by the high school. And then I think I remember my friend saying that they met in the high school in the lecture hall. So, and then I saw somebody going in to, to the lecture hall, and so I thought, oh, okay, this must be it. And so I rode my bike to the school, and this time my, my heart is just going, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk. and I really wanted to go in there, and I would, I would get there, and then I would go, no, I can't, and then I would ride my bike away, and then was like, no, I really want to go in there, so I would ride my bike back. There was there was a process of two or three times where I decided to, I wanted to go, but then no, I can't go. So I finally went in. I missed the worship service, but I came in time to hear the message where the pastor was saying, do you know, you can know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And then he was giving a message that, you know, a person is no more a Christian by going to church, then you become a car if you live in a garage. And it was like, you know, that made sense. And um, it made a lot of sense. And I didn't know if my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
And so later, I just kind of hung out at the back, and then after everybody had kind of left the church, um, I went forward and talked to the pastor. And, Hi, can I talk to you? And, and um, I, we just chatted, and then I told him I really, really liked his message. And then I think he got to thinking, wow, this girl is really <coughs> wanting something. Anyway, long story short, he left right there. He prayed and led me to the Lord. It, and I knew that something was different at that point. As soon as I said amen, I knew just from the lightness in my heart. I mean, I'm 16, and I don't want to sound super spiritual, but that's what it was. And I knew that something had changed. And um, it was the best decision I've ever made. So young ladies back there and all of us never never underestimate how just your countenance and how you present yourself what a testimony that in and of itself is because that is what actually drew me I saw what those that young lady had and I knew that's what I wanted so I just want to encourage you that it's that is huge in and of itself it's just a godly life so Anyway, so I was 16 and followed God since, and he is faithful, and he is so good. So.